Welcome to the Beale 2020 International Chess Festival. This is the 53rd edition of this tournament and it's a top class tournament with a master's tournament with players such as like Hare Krishna, legends such as Michael Adams and yeah, uh, great seconds like Radislav Wojtasek and Swan. Um, this, uh, before we get dive into the game, uh, Arkady Nidish versus Stor Noel Studer, let me, let me explain the time control and the match format. So the match format is, it divides into three portions, classical, rapid, and blitz, which they call as a triathlon. So there's classical, yeah. So the classical, um, so okay, totally they're gonna play 28 games in which eight, seven are the classical games and seven are from the rapid with reverse colors compared uh, comparing to the classical one and then lastly they will play the blitz which is 14 so it's black and white uh so, and it's two ways oh, sorry yeah black and white and somehow okay so this, as i told you there's three formats so for the classical it's 90 plus 45 seconds usually it's 30 seconds increment but it's 45 seconds increment here in the rapid it's pretty standard 15 plus 5 seconds increment and for the blitz it's 3 plus 2 increment so it's a fairly standard time control, but yeah, the classical one has changed a bit. So now, now we can, can dive, dive into the game. So let's start with the top board uh, match between Arkady Knightish versus Noel Studer. So the game starts with e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, and here uh, Knightish goes for g3, which is quite surprising. He never really played it, at least in my database. There are no listed uh, games on it. So this is known as the Gleck system because Igor Gleck used to play this, if, I, if I'm not wrong. So black goes with d5, takes, knight takes d5, and here bishop g2 takes, takes. This is pretty standard, castles and castles. And here, um, the most played move is bishop g4. Um, here, and I have h3, bishop h5, and there's queen one stuff there. Um, but black voluntarily pushed back his bishop, even though it doesn't look uh, anything bad and it's not bad at all. But actually, we'll, we will later see that this creates a lot of problems. So after, uh, white goes with a4, rook e8, knight d2. So this is what um, black should have not allowed. Like, usually knight to d2 gets this bishop rocking and then the knight comes to c4 attacking the e5 pawn so ideally black would like to play bishop g4 and kind of uh, yeah, you know uh, you know white to make some concessions with queen e1 stuff but actually there's even a much better idea to really break in with e4 and after takes even though it's slightly better with uh, some um, dubious engine ev evaluations um, but yeah, it's pretty um, easy to play this these type of positions, especially with um, the double pawns. And yeah, I think black should handle it quite easily. But actually, e4 was strong. Um, but yeah, black prepared that, and white was in time to nicely protect the e4 pawn. <laughs> After bishop e6. Rook b1, so uh, yeah, and um, white is trying to play knight b3, that's his idea, and to capture with the rook. Queen d7, knight b3, bishop g4. So you might think, what is the idea bit behind knight b3? So the basic point is that white is seeking to take this. So let's say after head 6, if black ignores um, white's threat, then this would be kind of nasty, even though it doesn't really exactly work here, but okay, not exactly, but the bishop will soon be trapped here somehow. So that's why it's intention. Okay, after bishop g4, queen e1. This is quite typical for the queen to come up because yeah, queen d2, obviously the bishop gets blocked. e4, pretty natural, and here white goes with d4. Actually, this is not a good idea because first thing that this light squares are weakened now and the second thing is that 
um, okay, now black's best move here is knight a5. So the point is that white is, uh, black is playing on the weakness created on the previous move. And if black takes it, sorry, white takes it, then actually, yeah, everything is super nice now for black. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if, um, yeah, it was, it's obviously it's sort of tough, but um, Studer went with a very natural rookie six here. And here, after bishop e3, basic de uh, development moves. Here, black played queen d5. And I would like to p p uh, say to you to pause the video and think, how could this be a wrong move? It's so natural. The first thing is it kind of covers the c4 uh, square and even queen h5 comes. And when I was guessing the moves, I was thinking, yeah, this is natural. And I was thinking about h3 and stuff like that. But then I came across, if I could make a5 work, that would be wonderful. And then I found out this amazing idea. That's why I, I wanted to create, do this video because it was so nice. So after c4, that's it. Uh, Black is just going to be a piece down because uh, after what happened in the game, queen h5, c5, so okay, obviously, after queen takes c4, then a5, and yeah, you know what I can say. Um, it's just the piece is trapped. So after queen h5, c5, knight e7, so black tries to um, initiate some kind of counterattack and uh, just I'll let you know that after c4 black took eight minutes, so it was complete shock for um, Studer um, After queen h5 c5 knight e7 takes and here everything was super here took the piece and now things are not easy as we think so if uh, King takes g2 then there's many ways to draw but I think this should be okay and yeah this comes and if it takes it should be a perpetual so white has to be careful here so after it takes here it's such a wonderful idea uh, the computer gave I can uh, guess it myself but so now the point is that what's the problem is now if white moves the rook this bishop would go here and now there's going to be a deadly threat and yeah and even knight could also come here any moment so <laughs> the engine came up with an ingenious idea with first queen c3 now threatening to promote black must um stop it queen c4 lovely move so white is trying to win tempos and then make full use of that so now if bishop f3 obviously um yeah the problem is it comes with a check so that's why um after let's say king f7 now rook e1 and here you can see the beauty like yeah white can do whatever he want like basically or yeah and then f1 and then queen f1 and this should win but yeah it's obviously it's it's not natural to go for this type of ideas but yeah um knightish went bishop g5 so that he can play what he played so h4 so he wants to protect the h4 pawn but actually there was one uh moment where yeah things would have gone good here black should play rook c8 it's very complicated here and i really like recommend should check my analysis links are below in the description this is very complicated and why this um bl sorry black is able to maintain the balance it's completely crazy but uh, the one thing i can tell that this is going to be a deadly threat which uh white has to be yeah he should do some action about that so you can check that check out my analysis links are below in the description there but how the game end was pretty uh it's nice d5 queen c4 and take it would be it and then yeah after a few minutes that's resigned wow this was a nice game i love the way how knightish nicely uh placed his pieces rook b1 knight b3 and yeah from knight d2 and a4 was a pretty handy move and then even though there was some 
areas where the defense could have been better, but he still um, kept the nerves. And yeah, I think Ash, we should give credit also to his opponent because he really um, tried to create some play with knight e7, knight f5, which was amazing. Um, yeah, I hope you liked the video. See you soon. Thank you.